Hey everyone! In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to crochet Waffle the Tubby Bear, which is one of my most popular amigurumi patterns. The full material list is down below, but this is what you'll need to get started. You'll need two different colors of yarn. One will be your main color, which will be used in the body and also in the ears and the arms. You'll also need um, one ball of white yarn, which I use for the muzzle. You can also just use the main color for the entire project if you would like, but I like using white for the muzzle. I'm using sport weight yarn, but you can also use worsted or any other um, size if you like. To go with my sport weight yarn, I'm using a 3.25mm hook, and I'm also going to be using 6mm safety eyes and black embroidery thread for embroidering the nose. You'll also need fiber fill stuffing to stuff your project, and I always like having a few stitch markers on hand to keep track of everything. Alright, let's jump right into the tutorial. The first step is to chain 7. I'm going to start this out by working a slip knot and then putting my hook through and then chaining 7. This is because this project starts out with a technique called working into a foundation chain which helps us create an oval shape. So I worked 4, 5, 6, and then 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 chain stitches. Next, we're going to create an oval by working into the second chain from the hook so this is the first chain from the hook, and this is the second chain. The loop around your hook doesn't count. So I'm going to go into the second chain from the hook from front to back, and then I'm going to work one single crochet stitch into it. So this is going to be the first single crochet stitch in round one. We're going to continue working the single crochet stitches into our entire chain, and then at the very end I'll show you what to do. So I've worked five single crochet stitches and I'm at the last chain. In the last chain, we'll actually work two single crochet stitches. So I'll insert my hook into the last chain that's closest to the slip knot and work one stitch and then another stitch into the same chain. Next, we're going to turn our work so that we begin working on the other side of the chain. So as you can see, here we have our chain loops, and then here we work single crochet stitches into one side. So we're just going to complete the oval by working into the other half of the chain stitches. And we're going to work 5 more so that there are 12 chain stitches total in the round. So now that I've finished round one, I'm just going to put a stitch marker into the last stitch and then quickly count to make sure that I crocheted the correct number of stitches. So starting from here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Perfect! So that is the end of round one. And from here on out, it's just going to be the same as crocheting in the round like normal. Um, no more weird chain stitches. So that is a technique called crocheting around a foundation chain to make an oval. For round two, we're going to increase into every single stitch. If you can't tell which is the next stitch you should go into, you can count backwards from your stitch marker and that should help you find where the first stitch is. So I'm going to go into here and then work an increase into every single stitch. So now that I'm at the end of the second round, I'm going to remove my stitch marker 
and work my last increase into that last stitch and then replace the stitch marker in the last stitch of round two. Round three is going to be a little bit different. We're going to work three single crochet stitches and then an increase and we're going to repeat that whole sequence four times. So to demonstrate I'll work three single crochet stitches first and then I'm going to work an increase. So that is one repeat and I'm going to repeat that whole sequence five more times for a total of six times. So the second repeat will be three more single crochet stitches. And then an increase. For round four, we're going to work four single crochet stitches and then an increase and we're going to repeat that six times for a total of 36 stitches. So I'll work one, two, three, four single crochet stitches and then I'm going to work an increase into the next stitch. So I'll put two single crochet stitches and do the same stitch. So that's one repeat and then I'm going to repeat that five more times. So one, two, three, four and then I'm going to do the increase. For round five, we'll work five single crochet stitches and then an increase, and we'll do that all six times for a total of 42 stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, and then an increase. And then we'll do that five more times. So one, two, three, four, and five, and then our increase. So round six is going to be really similar with six single crochet stitches and then an increase um, repeated six times for a total of 48 stitches. And if at this point your work looks a little hexagonal shape, that's totally okay. It'll smooth out a bit after we move past the increase rounds. So for round six, we'll do six single crochet stitches and then an increase. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then an increase. All right, so that is round six. And for our next four rounds, we'll just work a single crochet stitch into every single stitch. So the total stitch count will stay the same at 48 stitches. So you just want to do four more rounds of single crochet all around. So I'll meet you back after that for our second to last increase round. So I've just finished my four rounds that are single crochet all around rounds. And now my piece is starting to take on a bowl shape. And so, so this is a great time to flip your work inside out so that the right side is facing outwards. So the next round is going to be one more increase round and it's going to be um, seven single crochet stitches and then an increase for a total of 54 stitches. After that we'll have um, eight more rounds of just single crocheting all around and then we'll start decreasing. 
So this round will be seven single crochet stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then an increase. And we'll repeat that all around. So after that round is finished, it's actually a good time to put in your safety eyes. So the pattern tells us that we need to put our safety eyes between rounds 9 and 10. So we count from the top, and this is part of the original foundation chain. So this is the first round, this is round 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So grab your safety eyes and just insert them anywhere you want. Um, on the long side of the oval, so on the one of these two sides and not the short sides. And just insert it in and um, push it all the way in and make sure that you have seven stitches between your eyes. So I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then I'm going to put my next eye. and you can just secure them with washers on the back. And a quick warning that safety eyes are not child safe, so if you have small children, do not use safety eyes. You should embroider or use felt eyes instead. So I'm actually gonna put my safety eyes in later, but you should just keep them in for now and put the washers on the back as well. So the next eight rounds are to single crochet all around. So I'll, meet, so I'll meet you back here after we worked all around eight more rows. So I've just finished my eight rounds of single crocheting all around, and your work should look like this at this point. It's going to be almost um, a it's a really long bowl shape with a kind of defined oval on top, and so there's definitely a front and a back, and your safety eyes will be somewhere around here. And um, we're doing great. So our next round is going to be an increase round, and then we'll do another few rounds of single crocheting all around, and then we'll start decreasing for the base. So for our last round of increases, we're gonna do eight single crochet stitches and then an increase, and we'll do that all six times. So let's do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and then we'll do one increase. And then we'll just repeat that five more times all around. So now we're going to move on to the next step, which is going to be working five rounds of single crocheting all around. So I'll meet you back here after I've got five more rounds on my work. Alright, this is what our work looks like after working those five rounds. So our tube has gotten just a little bit longer, and now we're going to start creating the base by decreasing. So our first decrease round is to single crochet eight stitches and then work a decrease. So I'll show you how I do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And here I'm gonna do my invisible decrease where I insert the hook into the front loops of the next two stitches. So that's the first stitch, and then the second stitch, and then I yarn over and just pull through those first two loops, and then yarn over and pull through again. So that is my invisible decrease, so I'll just repeat that five more times for a total of 54 stitches. So the next round is very similar to um, the previous round. We're going to do seven single crochet stitches and then a decrease. So one two, three, four, five, 
6 and 7 and then again that invisible decrease so going through the front loops of the next two stitches yarning over pulling through the first two loops yarning over and pulling through again so I'll just repeat that all around for a total of 48 stitches and then we'll move on to the next round the next round is a little different Previously, all of our rounds have been worked in repeats of six, meaning that you'll repeat a certain set of instructions six times total. But for this round, we're going to work four single crochet stitches and then a decrease, but we're going to do that all eight times total. So I'll do the first repeat, which is just four single crochet stitches, so one, two, three, and four, and then we'll do a decrease. And we'll repeat this seven more times. So this will just result in a bit of a faster decrease because we're um, doing more decreases per round. So after this round you should have a total of 40 stitches. Alright, now you can see that our work is kind of curving in a little bit more because of all the decreases that we've been doing. The next round is going to be very similar for um, we're going to work three single crochet stitches and then a decrease and we'll do that all eight times just like the last round for a total of 32 stitches. So that's one, two, three single crochet stitches and then we'll do the decrease as usual. And then I'll just repeat that all around for a total of 8 times and a total of 32 stitches. Alright, our next round is also very similar. You're going to be doing 2 single crochet stitches and then a decrease all around. So that's 1, 2, and then a decrease. And we'll just repeat that all around. So at this point, we can probably start stuffing. Grab your fiber fill stuffing and gently pull it apart into smaller chunks, and then carefully layer each of the small pieces into your work from bottom to top. This helps make sure that all the stuffing is evenly distributed and that there are no awkward lumps. Alright! I like stuffing my amigurumi until they're really firm and if I push it in, the amigurumi will just bounce back. If you can see little gaps in your stitches and you can see the stuffing poking through, that means that your stitches probably weren't worked tight enough, so you should try increasing your tension or you should try using a smaller hook. So this is where I'm going to stuff to for now and in a few rounds I might just add a little bit more later, but this is basically um, all the stuffing you're going to be putting in. So the last few rounds are going to be pretty quick. So the next one is going to be one single crochet stitch and then a decrease. And then we'll move on to the second to last round. So we'll just do one single crochet stitch and then a decrease. And then we'll repeat that eight times all around. Okay, so this is your last opportunity to add any more stuffing, so go ahead and fill it all the way up before we make it too small to get any more in. So our next round is going to be decreasing eight times all around. And at this point, I tend to give up on using the invisible decrease and just use the regular decrease because it becomes pretty difficult to get your hook into those front loops. So I'll do my regular decrease here. I'll just repeat that eight times total all around. Okay, so we are at our last round, and the very last round is just a decrease four times total so that we close off the circle. And then I'll just show you how to finish off in the round. So get your tapestry needle um, and your scissors ready. So once you finish the last round, just grab your scissors and cut a length of about 8 to 10 inches. And then pull your crochet hook out all the way until you finish it off. 
so now you can no longer frog your work. Grab your tapestry needle and thread the yarn into the eye and then we'll just weave the needle over and under the last round like this over and under and over and under all around and pull it tight to cinch it shut insert the needle right down the center and come out anywhere else on the work then just grab your scissors and cut the yarn flush with the surface and the body is all done. So now that our body is done, the next step is to make the two little arms. The first step for the arm is to make a magic ring and then work six single crochet stitches into the magic ring. So I'm going to make a magic ring about the size of a dime and I'm going to work right into it and make six single crochet stitches. And watch how I'm holding the magic ring with my left hand so that I can get enough leverage to actually go into the magic ring. So now that I have six stitches, I'm going to pull the magic ring closed, grab my stitch marker and put it in the last stitch. So the next step is to work three more rounds of just single crocheting all around. So that's going to be six stitches total for each of those rounds. And I'm going to find the first stitch by counting backwards from the stitch marker. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm just going to work into every stitch all around. So now that I've finished the second round, I'm going to use this opportunity to kind of flip my work inside out carefully. It might be a little tough because it's such a small piece, but this is the best opportunity to do it because later on it will get really tough with um, the future rounds. So now that I've flipped my work inside out, I'm just going to do two more rounds of just working all around and then I'll make another arm in the same way. And here are my two completed arm pieces. As you can see, I finished them off, leaving a short tail of about maybe 10 inches, and I folded them flat, and I've also cut the tails inside so that they're no longer visible. So just make these two and then set them aside for later so that we can sew them onto the body. Um, next, we're gonna make the two ears, and then we'll make the muzzle in white yarn. For the ears, we're going to start again with a magic circle and with six single crochet stitches inside the magic circle. I'm just going to pull that shut and then the next round is going to be an increase round where we work one increase into every single stitch. So that's going to be six increases for a total of 12 stitches in round two. So I'm done with round two and I'm just going to pull in the tail to close the magic circle a little more and put my stitch marker back on. So the remaining two rounds are just going to be single crochet all around rounds. So we're just going to work into every single stitch for a total of 12 stitches in each round. And I'm going to make sure that I'm kind of flipping my work inside out so that I'm working this way. So I'm just going to work all around for two rounds. So 
So I finished the second round and so now I'm going to um, fold it flat and just finish it off. And as you can see, I flip my work inside out so that um, the side with the little horizontal bars is on the inside and the tail is also on the inside. So I'll just leave a tail of about maybe 10 inches and finish it off by just pulling the loop really big on my hook until the end comes out. And I'll also cut off the tail on the inside so that it's not getting in the way. We'll use this tail uh, for sewing later. So this is one ear and we'll eventually curve it and it'll go on the body um, kind of like, like this. So I'll just make one more ear and then we'll get to the muzzle. And here is the other ear. So now let's get started with the muzzle. So grab your white yarn and once again we'll start with a magic ring um, and we're gonna start with six single crochet stitches in that magic ring. So let's do it. And as always, I'm gonna put my stitch marker into the last stitch of the first round. And the next round is going to be a single crochet and then increase three times total. So I'm gonna find the first stitch. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's very difficult to see white yarn. So here's my single crochet. And then in the next stitch, I'm going to do an increase. And then in the next stitch, I'm going to do a single crochet again. And then an increase. And then one more single crochet. And an increase. So for round three, we're going to do two single crochet stitches and then an increase. And we're going to do that all three times for a total of 12 stitches. So I'm going to do one, two, and then in the third stitch is going to be an increase. And I'll repeat that two more times. All right, and the last round is just to work a single crochet stitch and do every single stitch. So we'll still be at 12 stitches total for the fourth round. And I'm also kind of simultaneously turning my work inside out so that the side with the horizontal bars is on the inside. All right, and then I'll just do a slip stitch into the next stitch. So I'm gonna yarn over, pull through, and then just pull through the loop as well. So this is the muzzle, and I'm gonna cut a tail of about 10 inches again to be used for sewing later. And now I'm going to embroider a muzzle, and now I'm gonna embroider a nose onto the muzzle and I'll just do a quick triangle shaped nose using black embroidery thread. And I like, um, instead of cutting the tail on the inside off, I like to just wrap it up and then stuff it inside to use as stuffing because we'll need to lightly stuff it later when we sew it to the, to the body. So it'll be around here just between the two eyes that you should have. So I'll just go ahead and embroider that and I'll be back and then we'll sew everything together. All right, so I've just embroidered the nose and then pinned all of the pieces together onto the body. So the muzzle should be exactly aligned with the middle of the eyes 
with the top of the muzzle aligning with the top of the eye so that it forms a straight line like this. So pin the rest of the limbs to the body um, where it says to in the pattern or you can kind of eyeball it and pick wherever you want the limbs to be. Next, I'll just go over how to sew each of them in place and then we'll be all done. Oh, keep in mind that when I um, pinned the muzzle down, I lightly stuffed it with the tail of the yarn just to stuff it really, really lightly. I'm going to start with sewing the ear on. So I'm mainly going to use a whip stitch technique and go under the body, come up and go through the bottom uh, row of the ear and just keep repeating that all around. So I'm going to do the first stitch first to secure it. I'm just going to grab a bit of the body, pull through, and then just come up through the rightmost side of the ear. There we go. So that's secure now. And I'll just keep going around and try to make sure to maintain that curved shape. Alright, awesome. So I'll just do one more stitch down to bury the tail and come out through the back and later I will um, cut the tail off right over here. So I'll just stitch the other ear on and then move on to the muzzle and the arms. So for the muzzle I'm going to use a similar technique. I'm going to go in and down into the body but I'm going to come up through one of the stitches of the muzzle, just like that. So I'll pull that through and then I'll go into the body again and then come out through a stitch. So for the muzzle, if it's a little small and it might be a little hard to sew, but you can also do several rounds around to really secure it because as you can see right now, I'm jumping a lot of stitches. So after one round around, I'll probably just pull on it lightly and see whether it's secure enough. So I might just do a few more stitches around. Alright, I feel like it looks good to me and it's pretty sturdy, so I'm going to just insert the hook anywhere and then come out through the back to bury the tail. And then now we just have the arms left. So for the arms, I'm going to go into the body right under the side of the arm and then I'm going to come out through the arm itself. Just like that. So I'm going to pull through. And I'm going to go in through the arm, go down into the body, and then come out in the next stitch. And that's where these bent tip tapestry needles really come in handy because they can help you just grab a little bit of the crochet fabric. So then I'll come out through the arm again, and then go in, and then go through the body as well, and then come out on the next stitch. So if you feel like it's not secure enough, you can always go back a couple times. And if you want, you can also secure the arm down by sewing um, this part down, but I don't really mind if it's like that. So I'm just going to secure it a little bit more. And that looks good to me, so I'll just come out through the back. And then I'll just repeat that with the other arm and then we'll cut off all the ends together. Alright, now that the sewing is all done, I'll just go ahead and cut off all those tails at the back. And if you can still see a little bit of the yarn sticking out, you can just push it back in with the back of a needle or your crochet hook. But there we go. 
and your waffle the bear is all finished. You can do all sorts of things with him like adding little accessories like a hat or like a little heart pillow for him to hold or anything like that. So I really hope you enjoyed making this really simple just one piece kind of crochet bear that doesn't require a lot of limbs to sew on besides the ears and the arms. So there we have it. Thank you so much for watching and I hope this video was really helpful.